Right, this is Gender for AQA Psychology and in this video we're going to look at the role of chromosomes in sex and gender and also atypical sex chromosome patterns. Okay, so first of all the role of chromosomes. You're probably aware that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes um, and that it's the last pair here which determine our uh, set biological sex. Now, um, you're probably also aware that our chromosomes are made up of DNA and short sections of that are what are known as our genes, which um, carry out many important functions or determine many important functions in our body. Um, the default path um, that we take is female in the absence of a Y chromosome. Um, our genes may be involved in determining our gender um, in terms of they have many important effects on hormones and so on in the body which in turn influences our behaviour. So they may be, it, they certainly determine our biological sex, they may also be involved in, um, remember our gender is our sense of femaleness or maleness. Um, the Y chromosome, um, if you have one, it works prenatally, uh, that is before you're born in the womb, it starts work immediately um, producing genitals. Um, it has genes on it which cause, cause the testes to, de to develop um, and also other genes which determine sperm production and also the production of male hormones. So one example here is called the SRY gene which stands for sex determining region Y, um, which causes the testes to develop, which in turn um, starts hormone production um, androgen of androgens, male hormones. Um, and that's a picture of the X and Y chromosomes. This one here is an X chromosome, the smaller one here is the Y chromosome, um, named because that's what they look like. Right. Research support. So what research do we have to support the, the um, idea that chromosomes are involved in sex and gender? So first of all, there's a study by Koopman on um, female mice fetuses where he um, added in the SRY gene to female mice and found that they basically took on a male gender role. They tried to mate with females um, and then Equally, he did the opposite and knocked out the SRY gene in male mice fetuses and then found that they took on a female gender role, um, acting, appearing and acting like um, female mice. So that's quite strong evidence for the role of the SRY gene and for the role of the chromosome in determining sex and gender. Um, we've then got a case study um, on someone called David Riemer, which you may have heard of or come across before, which is um, a very sad case where uh, David, who was born a boy, then was involved in an accident when he was circumcised, uh, which burned off his penis. He was then raised as a girl. Um, and however he was not happy as a girl he was very troubled and eventually when he discovered that he um, that what had happened he identified as a boy and changed gender um, so that suggests that his gender role was determined by his genes and not by the way he was raised because his parents had made every effort to raise him as a girl and yet he still um, ended up uh, reverting to being a boy. Okay, next one. Um, this was another study, again, which showed, showed support for the role of chromosomes in gender development. Reiner and Gearhart, they looked at uh, 16 genetic males born without penises and um, 14 of those were raised as female but a, a very large proportion of those, eight, eight of them, decided um, by age 16 that they were going to have gender reassignment and become male. So that's another study that supports the role of chromosomes. Okay, however, it's not all um, studies that um, completely support the idea of chromosomes affecting our gender. So um, Bradley did a case study which contradicted David Riemer. Um, he reported on someone who was raised as a girl and was very happy as a girl, so didn't need to revert to being a boy despite being born male. So uh, you can see there's a lot of support, but it's not completely unanimous. 
Okay, now we're going to look at atypical sex chromosome patterns. So we're looking at two syndromes here, Kleinefelter syndrome and Turner syndrome. Right, we'll start with Kleinefelter's. This is a syndrome where you have an extra chromosome here. You can see instead of a pair, XY or XX, um, these individuals have three chromosomes in, in that pair, X, X, Y. So they, because of the presence of the Y chromosome, they normally develop as a male. This affects one in a thousand males, so it's um, more common than you might think. Um, the, the symptoms of this syndrome are that you have small testes, less testosterone, reduced um, body hair, you're less muscular, have long arms and legs, problems with coordination, uh, may develop breasts at puberty, uh, and more body contours than would be expected. Um, equally, the, um, the psychological characteristics uh, can be that you have poor language and reading ability, you may be shy, socially immature, and not interested in sex. Um, actually, Kleinefelter syndrome, um, in many cases, people don't know they have it. I think in about two-thirds of cases, people are not aware that they have Kleinefelter syndrome, and often it's discovered by accident um, when testing for something else. It, 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 the third, the extra chromosome is, is discovered. Um, so that's Kleinefelter syndrome. Um, and we look at these syndromes because it, it, it gives us more evidence about the role of chromosomes in sex and gender and what effect they can have. Right, Turner's syndrome, on, on the other hand, um, is, you can see, rather than having an extra chromosome here, there's actually a chromosome missing. So they're known as XO because there's, uh, there's one missing. Um, and this, uh, what happens here is people develop as female because there's no Y chromosome. Remember, by default, we develop as female unless there's a Y chromosome present. It affects one in 2,000 women. It has actually many, many different um, possible characteristics, um, but no two Turner syndrome sufferers are the same, so they may have any number of different issues um, and present in many different ways. So things like infertility, lack of growth, uh, a webbed neck, issues with their ears, nose and throat, um, above average reading ability, below average spatial ability and maths ability, but it, it's not going to be particularly necessarily every single one of those, probably a selection of different ones. Um, so that's Turner's syndrome. Now, if we look at research into atypical sex chromosomes, this is moving into our evaluation, the research has been really helpful t to psychology in terms of contributing to the nature-nurture debate. It can, um, if we look at, at the gender of people affected by these conditions, then that can really help us to understand um, whether nature or nurture is um, affecting them. Research also helps us to understand what aspects of development are influenced by sex chromosomes, uh, because you can see that where there's an extra chromosome or we're lacking a chromosome, what's not happening or what is happening that's extra. So it's really helpful in that sense. Understanding these um, conditions helps us to develop more effective treatment. So, for example, um, people with Kleinefelter's syndrome can be given extra testosterone because we know that their levels of testosterone are lower as a result of research and, and that that can then help them develop uh, to be more muscular, to not have the body contours and the breasts and, and so on. So research has been really good in that sense because it's helped us to develop more effective treatment. Um, equally, those with Turner sy syndrome can be monitored for their development and, and given growth hormone and, and so on if they're showing that they're not growing enough uh, because one characteristic is being really short and not showing having enough growth. Um, some effects um, might be environmental, though, on the other hand. So it's really hard. We can say that these are the um, symptoms of these 
um, syndromes, but we can't necessarily say that all of the effects are down to the chromosomes. So, for example, um, there's a higher level of criminality among um, men with Kleinefelter syndrome, um, and you might say, oh, it's because they've got this syndrome, but actually it might just be because of something in the environment, like they're less likely to get married and have kids. So that might be what instead what's causing the, the criminality. Um, so that's just one example, really. So it, it's although we can s describe these syndromes, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of these things are down to the effect of their chromosomes. So that's the effect of chromosomes on sex and gender.